partial derivatives. Recall that if y equals f of x, then the derivative of f with respect to x, written f prime of x, is the limit as delta x goes to zero, f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x, as long as the limit exists. Now let's consider a function of two variables. Let z equal f of x, y. f sub x of x, y is defined to be the limit as delta x goes to zero, f of x plus delta x, y minus f of x, y over delta x. This is known as the partial derivative of f with respect to x. Notice that the definition here looks just like a regular derivative, except there's an extra y that appears that really seems to be doing nothing. It's the same y in each of the two terms in the numerator. And that's exactly what's happening. When we take a partial derivative of a function of two variables with respect to x, we're essentially just differentiating just like we would in single variable calculus, thinking of x as the variable and pretending that y is a constant. So in practice for elementary functions, you don't actually have to use this definition in order to compute a partial derivative with respect to x. You could just differentiate the way you would in single variable calculus, pretending y is constant. Similarly, f sub y of x, y is the limit as delta y goes to zero, f of x, y plus delta y minus f of x, y over delta y. This is known as the partial derivative of f with respect to y. This time, x is being treated as a constant when you differentiate. So in practice, for elementary functions, differentiating with respect to y is just like what you would do in single variable calculus, pretending that this is just a function of y and x is being treated as a constant. Before we go on, just a few other notations that you might see for partial derivatives. So the notation I gave already is f sub x and f sub y. You may also see a partial derivative written as del del x f of x y or del del y f of x y. I'm pronouncing that symbol you see there as del. And usually I'll just read that as the partial respect to x of f of x y and the partial respect to y of f of x y. And we could also just write z sub x or z sub y when we know that z is equal to f of x y. Let's try to understand what's going on with these partial derivatives geometrically. We start with a surface S that is the graph of the function z equals f of x, y. And let's take a point on that surface, x0, y0, z0. If we fix y to be equal to y0, in other words, we're looking at all points on that surface where y is equal to a fixed value y0, we get a curve. Let's look at the tangent line to that curve at the point x0, y0, z0. The slope of that tangent line is f sub x at x0, y0. Right? So again, f sub x, x0, y0 is the slope of the tangent line at the point x0, y0, z0 to the graph of z equals f of x, y0. Notice that that is just a function of the single variable x because y has been replaced by a specific value. Similarly, if we fix x equals x0, we get another curve on the surface that's passing through the point x0, y0, z0. Let's once again draw the tangent line to that curve at the point x0, y0, z0. And that tangent line has slope f sub y of x0, y0. So again, f sub y, x0, y0 is the slope of the tangent line at x0, y0, z0 to the graph of z equals f of x0, y. Again, notice that z equals f of x0, y 
is just a function of the single variable y because x has been replaced by a specific value x0. Let's try to actually compute some partial derivatives now. This is a great time to pause the video, try these examples yourself, and then resume the video to check your answers against mine. Find the partial derivatives of f of xy equals 3x minus x squared y squared plus 2x cubed y. Well, to find the partial of f with respect to x, we differentiate the function just like we would in single variable calculus, pretending that y is a constant. So the derivative of 3x is 3. The derivative of negative x squared y squared is just negative 2xy squared. We're just doing the power rule on x and pretending y is a constant. So y squared is a constant and it just sits there. Similarly, the derivative of 2x cubed y is just 3 times 2x squared y or 6x squared y. Again, y is sitting there as a constant just like the 2 is. The partial of f with respect to y, well, 3x is being treated as a constant now, so that derivative is 0. For negative x squared y squared, we just do the power rule on y squared to get negative 2x squared y. And for 2x cubed y, 2x cubed is being treated as a constant, so it's just a constant times y. The derivative is the constant 2x cubed. Next, for f of xy equals xe to the x squared y, find f sub x of 1 ln 2 and f sub y of 1 ln 2. Let's start by just finding f sub x. The partial of f with respect to x, well, here we have a product rule. It's the first, which is x, times the derivative of the second. The derivative of e to the x squared y is e to the x squared y times 2xy by the chain rule plus the second, which is e to the x squared y, times the derivative of the first, the derivative of x is just 1. And f sub y, well, x is being treated as a constant here, so it's just x times e to the x squared y times x squared by the chain rule. And notice I multiplied the x and x squared together to get x cubed there. Now we're going to plug in the point. So f sub x at 1 ln 2 is 1 times e to the 1 squared times ln 2, or just e to the ln 2, times 2 times 1 times ln 2, or just 2 ln 2, plus again e to the ln 2. e to the ln 2 is just 2, 2 times 2 is 4, so we get 4 ln 2 plus 2. f sub y at 1 ln 2 is 1 cubed, e to the 1 squared times ln 2, or just e to the ln 2, which is 2. Find the slopes of the surface z equals negative x squared over 2 minus y squared plus 25 eighths at 1 half 1 2 in the x and y directions. Well, the partial of z with respect to x is just negative 2x over 2 or negative x. The rest is 0 because it's being treated as constant. The partial of z with respect to y, well, the first term is being treated as constant, so it just becomes 0. And the derivative of negative y squared with respect to y is negative 2y. And of course, that last constant goes away. Now we want z sub x at 1 half 1. So we're replacing x by 1 half, and we get negative 1 half. And similarly, z sub y at 1 half 1, we're replacing y by 1, and we get negative 2. Find the partial derivatives of f of x, y, z equals x, y plus y, z squared plus x, z. So here we're taking partial derivatives of a function of three variables. I never specifically told you how to do this, but it's completely analogous. Here we're going to be finding three different partial derivatives, the partial with respect to x, the partial with respect to y, and the partial with respect to z, and we do it in exactly the same way. For the partial with respect to x, we pretend that y and z are constants. So the derivative of xy is just y, and the derivative of yz squared is just zero because no x appears. The derivative of xz is just z. For the partial of f with respect to y, 
xy becomes x, yz squared becomes z squared, and xz becomes zero because it's being treated as constant. And for the partial of f with respect to z, xy is being treated as constant, so its derivative is zero. yz squared is just a power rule, 2yz, and xz is just a constant times z, so we get the constant, which is x. Next one, let f of x, y, z equals z sine x, y squared plus 2z. Compute the partial of f with respect to z. All right, this is a product rule. So we have the first, which is z, times the derivative of the second, which becomes cosine x, y squared plus 2z. And then by the chain rule, we have to multiply that by 2, which I put all the way on the left plus the second, which is sine xy squared plus 2z, times the derivative of z, which is 1. Let f of xyzw equal x plus y plus z over w. Compute partial f with respect to y and partial f with respect to w. Okay, here we have a function of four variables. There are four partial derivatives, but we're only being asked to compute two of them. Okay, so first notice that we could rewrite this as 1 over w times x plus y plus z. So the partial of f with respect to y is the constant 1 over w times the derivative of x plus y plus z, which is 0 plus 1 plus 0. So we just get 1 over w. For the partial of f with respect to w, we have a constant over w. So the derivative is negative, the constant over w squared. If you don't see that right away, you might want to rewrite 1 over w times x plus y plus z as x plus y plus z times w to the minus 1, so that you could see that the derivative is negative 1 times x plus y plus z times w to the negative 2, and then rewrite it in the form that I have there. Another example. Let f of x, y be this piecewise defined function defined by negative x, y over x squared plus y squared if x, y is not equal to 0, 0, and 0 if x, y is equal to 0, 0. Does f have partial derivatives at 0, 0? For this one, since the function is piecewise defined, we're going to have to go back to the definition of the partial derivatives. I'll put them up here for reference. So the partial of f with respect to x as 0, 0 is the limit as delta x goes to 0, f of 0 plus delta x, 0 minus f of 0, 0 over delta x, which is the limit as delta x goes to 0, f of delta x, 0 over delta x. Notice that f of 0, 0 is just 0. So plugging into the expression negative xy over x squared plus y squared, we get negative delta x times 0 over delta x squared over delta x, which is just 0. Similarly, for the partial of f with respect to y at 0, 0, we get the limit as delta y goes to 0, f of 0, 0 plus delta y minus f of 0, 0 over delta y, which, again, f of 0, 0 is just 0, so we get the limit as delta y goes to 0, f of 0 delta y over delta y, which is the limit as delta y goes to 0, negative 0 times delta y over delta y squared over delta y. And that is equal to 0 as well. What happens when we take the partial derivative of a partial derivative? We get what's called second partial derivatives. So for example, the partial with respect to x of the partial of f with respect to x we will usually write that with an exponent of 2 partial squared f with respect to x squared. So that just means take the second partial with respect to x. In other words, differentiate with respect to x twice. Another notation for that is fxx. Similarly, if we want to differentiate with respect to y twice, or take the partial with respect to y of the partial of f with respect to y, that's the partial squared f with respect to y squared. That's the notation for it. Or we could write f y y. In addition to these two second partial derivatives, we have what's called mixed partial derivatives. For example, we could take the partial with respect to y of the partial of f with respect to x. We write that as partial squared f over partial y partial x. Or in the other notation, f x y. And for the other mixed partial, partial respect to x, partial f with respect to y, we write that as partial squared f 
over partial x partial y, or using the other notation fyx. Notice that with the first notation on the left, the ones written in the middle column there, we apply the variable on the right first followed by the left. For example, in the third line, that partial squared f over partial y partial x, we do the partial respect to x first followed by the partial respect to y. But using the second notation on the right, the right-hand column, we go from left to right. So again, looking at the third row, fxy means differentiate respect to x first, then y. We could see that like this. Um, fxx means differentiate respect to x and then x. Fyy means differentiate respect to y and then y. Fxy means differentiate respect to x and then y. And fyx means differentiate respect to y and then x. Let's try an example. So here's a function of two variables. See if you can find all four second partial derivatives for this function. Of course, you're going to have to find the first partial derivatives first in order to do that. Pause the video, try this yourself, and then resume the video to check your answers with mine. Okay, f sub x is 3y squared plus 10xy squared. f sub y is 6xy minus 2 plus 10x squared y. Now let's do the second partials. For fxx, we're taking fx and differentiating again with respect to x. 3y squared becomes 0 and 10xy squared becomes 10y squared. For fyy, we're taking fy and differentiating with respect to y. So we get 6x plus 0 plus 10x squared. And now the mixed partials, fxy. So we're looking at f sub x and we're differentiating that with respect to y. We get 6y plus 20xy. And finally, fyx, we look at f sub y and differentiate with respect to x. We get 6y plus 20xy. Now you may notice that fxy and fyx came out the same. The mixed partials are equal. This is not a coincidence. Clairaut's theorem says that if fxy and fyx are continuous on an open disk D, then for every xy and D, fxy xy is equal to fyx xy. In other words, as long as the function is sufficiently nice, the mixed second partials are always going to be equal. And by sufficiently nice, we mean that the function has continuous mixed second partials on some open disk surrounding the point that we're interested in. See if you can use Clairaut's theorem to compute all of the third partial derivatives for this function. There are eight of them, but you'll only have to compute a few because Clairaut's theorem gives you many of them for free. Try that now, pause the video, and then resume the video to check your answers. Okay, so we have fxxx is zero because fxx is a function of y. fxxy, fxyx, and fyxx are all going to be the same by Clairaut's theorem. So let's do fxxy. So if we look at fxx, and differentiate that with respect to y, that's 10y squared, it becomes 20y. Let's do fxyy, which is the same as fyxy and fyyx. So looking at fxy and differentiating that with respect to y, we have 6y plus 20xy becomes 6 plus 20x. And finally, we need fyyy, which looking at fyy, we see that's a function of x, so the answer is zero.